Hi, this is Larry Jordan. Are you feeling frustrated? Well, here's an answer to another Final Cut Pro question. I am a real and old fan of iMovie, personal use, and Final Cut 7 for professional use. For a newcomer in this business, would you recommend to begin from scratch with Final Cut 10, Premiere Pro, or Avid? That is a really, really good question. The question of what editing software to use really revolves around how much you need to access your existing library of material, what projects you're working on, and what you're comfortable with. Final Cut 7 and Adobe Premiere Pro CS5.5 and Avid Media Composer 5 and Final Cut 10 are all, in different ways, professional-grade applications. Now, I say that knowing that there's a lot of people that say, Final Cut 10 doesn't meet my professional grade. And that's absolutely true. It doesn't. There's a lot of people that Final Cut doesn't meet their needs for. I do a lot of multi-cam editing. I can't use Final Cut 10 right now for multi-cam editing. I use Final Cut 7. But there's also a lot of people, and I get emails every day from folks from around the world. Final Cut 10 is being used for live news broadcast on the East Coast and in France. It's being used by people that are being paid as editors to edit work because they like the speed of Final Cut 10. So the question always has to revolve around what's the project that you're working on and what tool meets your needs. If, if you've got an existing library of Final Cut 7 projects, you continue using Final Cut 7. If you're re-editing a project or if you're in the middle of a project, you never, ever, ever change editing software in the middle of a project. Final Cut 7 works now in both 10.6 and 10.7. It's going to continue to work for the foreseeable future, which means that there's not an immediate rush right now to drop everything. I've got to upgrade somewhere else in the middle of a project. The middle of a project is always the worst possible time to upgrade anything. What we find is that if we have to make the transition, we're going to have to make a transition from Final Cut 7 to Avid, or a transition to Adobe Premiere Pro, or a transition to Final Cut 10. In all three cases, regardless of which application you're going to go to, if you need to move a Final Cut 7 project over in Final Cut 10, we can't move it at all. I'll talk about that in a minute. In, Final, in Adobe and Avid, we can move it, but we cannot move everything. Effects will not transfer. Color grading will not transfer. Retiming will not transfer. What we're able to move across is the edit and basic transitions and audio levels. So whether I move to Avid or whether I move to Adobe, it's not going to be a one-for-one -one mapping of our projects. We're going to see that we're going to lose something. So you want to keep Final Cut 7 for your legacy projects. This is one of the problems that we've got with Final Cut 10. I, th I fully expect at some point, now that the XML import-export problem is solved, which had to be solved by Apple, somebody enterprising is going to figure out how to move Final Cut 7 projects up into Final Cut 10. I don't have any doubt about it. I don't know who's doing it. I don't know when it's going to be available. I don't know how, none of that stuff. But technically, it's doable. But again, keep in mind that even if it were doable, the, the architecture between the two applications is so different that we're going to have the same problem we've got with Avid or with Adobe. And that is that effects are not going to transfer. Retiming is not going to transfer. Color grading is not going to transfer. We're going to be able to move our edit, move basic transitions, move audio levels, move the, 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 the media, but stuff is going to get lost. So in all three cases, assuming at some point in the future that we're able to move stuff from 7 to 10, which now that XML export is there, I'm assuming, but nobody has told me, so that's just you know conjecture on my part. Don't say Larry knows it's coming, Larry doesn't, Larry is guessing that it's coming. We're going to be in the same position with all three of these applications. So it gets back to which meets your need. If you don't want to learn something new, and you really want to stay with the skill set that you got with Final Cut 7, move to Adobe Premiere CS5.5. Adobe has done a wonderful job of mimicking keyboard shortcuts and the basic operations of Final Cut 7 inside Premiere CS5.5. The difference between CS5 and 5.5 is that CS5 put in all the new technology, and CS5.5 made it emulate Final Cut 7. If, on the other hand, you're working in an Avid shop, then move from Final Cut to Avid because Avid, there's no question, Avid does professional-grade work worldwide. 
I'm more comfortable with Adobe Premiere. I know it better than I know Avid, but that doesn't mean bad things about Avid. It just means that I can't know every piece of software that's out there. So I'm working on learning more about Premiere and Final Cut 7 and Final Cut 10. If you're working tapeless and you need to output files and tape is not something you have to work with, the speed of Final Cut 10 and some of the new features, the magnetic timeline for one, is, is and, and the background processing for another, make Final Cut 10 absolutely worth considering and definitely worth downloading the free trial for. So there is no perfect software. It's like saying, what's the best possible camera? How much do you have to spend? What do you want to do? What kind of effects are you working with? My name is Larry Jordan. For more training, both written and video, visit larryjordan.biz slash store today. And thanks for watching.